Welcome to Hot Topics. In this video, we want to discuss the old existing table 220.42 that was changed to 220.45. And in this 2023 edition, it's been changed uh, to 220.1101. Now, one of the big changes in these tables that we'll see in relocating and renumbering in the 2014 edition of the NEC, then they deleted uh, uh, hospitals out in the 20, uh, 20 edition of the NEC. But in the 2014 edition, hospitals, you could apply a demand load of, uh, for the first 50,000 vote amps at 40%, anything over uh, 50,000 at 20%. But notice when you get time to read and review this table 220.42, in the 2014 edition, it pertained only to lighting loads. And plans examiners that work for the state, county, or city have told me that they had a big problem. Engineers and contractors, and I'm not talking about all engineers and contractors, but some wanted to apply these percentage to all lighting loads, whether it was continuous or non-continuous, and they were having a big problem with this. So what they did in the 2020 edition, they just completely deleted hospitals uh, from our table uh, 220.42. And then in the 2023 edition, with the new table that they relocated and uh, provided us with a new table 220.1101, uh, it only pertains to receptacle loads. And it seems that the lighting loads have disappeared. Now, we'll see shortly that they restricted these receptacle loads to certain locations uh, in a uh, healthcare facility or a hospital. Hospital mainly is what we're talking about here. But now, notice uh, in this new table at the left of the illustration, then you notice our table 220.10.1 for receptacle loads, if we had uh, a certain number of receptacles, we could take the first 5,000 or less at 100%, no demand. But anything over 5,000 up to 10,000, 50% could be applied. Then anything over 10,000, 25% additional demand could be taken. For example, look in the... Uh, the calculation here, uh, 220.14H and I, 150 receptacles at 180 VA would come up to 27,000 VA, step one. Step two, the application now, the demand factors of table 220.1101, first 10,000, 100%, 5,000 right across the board. The next 5,000 at 50 percent, we'd come up with 25,000. Then anything over uh, 5,000 up to 10,000 at 27, which would be 27,000 when you did the math, we could take 25 percent. So our demands would, in this case, would be 100 percent, no demand, 50 percent demand, 25 percent demand, and when you total those values, we come up with 14,250. Now, that's quite a demand where in step one it was 27,000. We put a demand on it from 14,000 to 250. And basically what they're saying, if you only had 5,000 VA, then 100% of that, they're saying, hey, they might use all that. But anything that was uh, over 5,000, they take it 50%, and I'd say, well, not only maybe 50% of those would be you see. And then anything that was uh, over 5,000 up to 10,000, and you're over 10,000 mainly, it'd be 27,000 at 25%. And now they're saying that only 25% of those receptacles would probably be used. So that's how that demand factor is kind of determined through years of experience and uh, taking demand and seeing how these receptacles would be used. Now, notice that this is basically uh, what the rule uh, would, would let you do uh, 
for receptacles only, but you see that it doesn't say anything about lighting loads. Now, this illustration that you see comes out of Stalkup's uh, Illustrated Code Change book, and of course, you know, when you look at the purpose of the change, it's a new part that was accepted to clarify that the receptacle loads can be calculated per section 220.14 H and I, and under certain uh, values, you could have demand factors applied uh, from table 220.10.1. Uh, basically, is what they're saying. And if you look at table 110.2, uh, then of course you know that's uh, uh, shore receptacles and, and you know areas like that. Now, looking at the uh, areas now where they're saying now we're restricted on these receptacles to these areas. Look at the note 1 to NEC 220.110, and it'd be our no section, and Article 100 is our definition of these areas. Now, if, I, if we went over, and I believe it's page 52, we could pick up Article 100 in these definition, definitions excuse me, on page 52 of the NEC. Now, 250.110, uh, here I think it's on page 101, of the 2023 edition. But notice we're talking about the definition healthcare space category. Any space of healthcare facility wherein patients are intended to be examined or treated. Now that's, that's, that's your uh, key uh, uh, words there. Uh, examined or treated. Now the uh, informational note 1 to 220.110 the healthcare facilities, uh, facilities governing body uh, designates patient care space in accordance with the type of uh, patient care anticipated. Uh, what kind of care uh, and what kind of treatment is anticipated? And then again, in the informational one, business uh, offices, carters, lounges, day rooms, dining rooms, and any similar area that the authority having jurisdiction will accept typically are not classified as patient care spaces. So we pick that up. Now, uh, going down now to the next illustration coming up, we get that category one space and the category uh, one area. Space in which failure of equipment or a system is likely to cause major injury or death of patients, staff, or visitors. And then, of course, the informational note comes in and it kind of tells you these spaces that are formerly known as critical care uh, room areas are typically where patients are intended to be subject to invasive procedures and uh, connected to line-operated uh, patient care-related appliances. And some examples they give you included but are not limited to special care uh, patient rooms used for critical care, intensive care, uh, special care treatment rooms, uh, you know, uh, laboratories type areas, uh, uh, your uh, areas of where they would have a, a catheter or something inserted into the uh, veins and so forth, and delivery rooms, operating rooms, uh, post uh, anesthetic uh, care units, uh, uh, drama rooms, and other similar rooms. So they kind of give you some examples there. You can kind of go over that. So, so they're saying, hey, now these receptacles are limited to these areas or a similar area where the engineer designates it as such or a contractor that uh, was doing the work uh, subject to the approval of the authority having jurisdiction. Now let's go to the next uh, illustration and we pick up category two. And this space is a space in which failure of equipment or system is likely to cause minor injury to patient, staff, or visitors. And then, of course, the note, you know, one there is going to tell you these uh, spaces were formerly known as general care uh, rooms uh, and examinations include, but are not limited to inpatient uh, bedrooms, uh, analysis rooms, and uh, uh, areas like that, uh, and similar rooms. Any room that the engineer would designate or a contractor having the authority to do so would designate always subject to the approval of the authority having jurisdiction. So we kind of uh, uh, make sure we look at that. Now let's look at the next 
uh, illustration, Category 3 space. And these spaces are spaces in which uh, the failure of equipment or system is not likely to cause injury to patients, staff, or visitors, but can cause discomfort. And again, the informational note, these spaces formerly known as basic care rooms are typically for basic uh, uh, medical or dental care treatment, examinations are performed and so forth. And of course, the examples included are but not limited to examination or treatment, treatment rooms, excuse me, in clinics, medical and dental office, nursing offices where nursing takes place, and limited uh, care facilities. And in course, we have the uh, kind of category four uh, that we would look at. And notice in this next illustration that we're looking at, category four, is a space in which failure of component or system is not likely to have a physical impact on patient care. And again, the informational note, these spaces were formerly known as support rooms and of course, we have some examples of such spaces, and uh, they're included as uh, anesthetizing rooms, you know, sterile supply, lavatories, morgues, uh, waiting rooms, utility rooms, lounges, and so forth. And then, of course, if you wanted to look at the informational note two, then uh, that's the, you know, naturally 220.110. It refers the users to 220.14H and 220.14i on page 101 and page 75 to determine uh, how to calculate these receptacles at 180 VA to, uh, you know, to produce a total and provide a total and then demand factors applied as the table 220.101 would allow. Now, if you, uh, of course, now this is not permitted uh, in the code yet, but if you wanted to look at the category five, you would go to uh, NFPA 99 and you would look at uh, 3.3.140.5 and they tell you what those areas are. But they're not included in this table as of yet. So folks, that's what you uh, have with this uh, arrangement of these of the tables it used to be 220.42 was changed uh, for lighting loads uh, to uh, 20.45 and then for hospitals they just moved over and provided us a new table which was not in the 2020 at all say for applying a demand uh, demand to those receptacle loads is identified uh, as hospitals and health care facilities and so forth so now we, uh, we have those uh, demands that are given for receptacles only uh, in the new table 220.1101, and I believe that's around page uh, 101, I believe, uh, in the 2023 edition of the NEC. And of course, you can get this information also in the Stalkup's uh, Illustrated Code Change Book 2023, which you can... Uh, uh, get it from buildersbooks.com uh, uh, or you could uh, get on our website if you want to and download it or just go to uh, buildersbooks.com. Uh, again, if you like our videos and if you think uh, as we bring them to you that you enjoy reviewing them and they help you, recommend uh, these videos to your friends and uh, we would appreciate it. And uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, notification and these videos will come automatically to you. We try to get one in every week, but we just finished now the code change book, so we'll have a little bit more free time. But again, you know, I've got a number of books to update, so this is a busy time of the year for us. But again, my name is James Gray Stalkup, and uh, I certainly appreciate you watching this video.